So, we talked about uh, p n junction in uh, forward bias, where you connect uh, a cell with some resistance etcetera, higher voltage being given to the p side and uh, lower voltage given to the n side. And then we saw that uh, this applied voltage, if you have this uh, p n junction here and you connect a, a cell here, so that this is at a higher potential, this is at a lower potential and this applied voltage is V A, that potential barrier is reduced by this V A. And if this applied potential or that reduction in uh, potential barrier is small as compared to the original potential barrier, then uh, the extra uh, majority carriers which can diffuse that number goes up exponentially and then we have this equation i equal to i naught e power e v over k t this is that v applied and minus 1. This is known as ideal diode equation. Now, before proceeding further, let me just uh, uh, give uh, numerical values of this quantity for different values of applied voltage. This I naught is typically, this I naught which is the diffusion current and same as drift current if there is no biasing, that is typically say few micro amperes. So, let us say 10 micro amperes and at room temperature at uh, T equal to let us say 300 K, this K into T is 0 0.026 E V and if you apply say V A is equal to say 0 0.1 volt, that means E times V A will be 0 0.1 E V. So, similarly for different applied volts you will have uh, E V same number, but this voltage will volts will become electron volts and E V by K T. So, E V by K T uh, for example, in this uh, case E V by K T will be just the 0 0.1 and then divided by 0 0.026 and the E V E V cancels out. So, one can uh, evaluate this number once the applied voltage is chosen and then you can calculate this whole thing taking I naught say 10 micro ampere or so and I have some data for you. I have some data for you. Uh, if uh, I take V here applied voltage here and E this whole thing let me take this whole thing I naught E to the power E V by K T and then minus 1. So, at 0 this is 0, this is fine at V A equal to 0 you have E to the power 0 equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So, that is this. Then if you take 0 0.05 volt if you apply this much then uh, it becomes 58 micro amperes. If you, if you take uh, 0 0.1, then it becomes 458, uh, this is this is 46, this 40, this is not 58, this is 46, this is 46 micro ampere, this is uh, 458 micro ampere and if you take 0 0.2, applied voltage is 0 0.2 this is 21.9 milli amperes and if you take 0 0.3, this number is 1.025 amperes and if you take this as 0 0.7, then you have 4.9 into 10 power 6 ampere. So, this gives you a kind of a feel that you cannot apply large voltages, you cannot apply large voltages here 
the diode manufacturer will tell how much current it can sustain. If you send more current than that allowed limit, then this whole diode will be destroyed. So, this actual voltage that you apply on the junction uh, should be much much uh, small, smaller than this uh, points for silicon this 0.7 is that uh, typically of course, it will depend on temperature and many things, but little bit on uh, doping perhaps, but uh, typically it is around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and if you apply that much, you have huge, huge, huge impossible current and that is understandable physically. If 0 0.7 electron volt is that barrier, energy barrier and if you apply 0 0.7 volts, what you are doing? you are reducing that barrier to zero, there is no barrier. Then the entire majority carriers this side, entire majority carrier this side can uh, just uh, flow without any barrier. So that will be like a short circuit, like short circuit. So, the actual voltage which is applied across the junction is much much less than that and in that limit this equation is usable. Okay. Of course, the diode itself has some uh, resistance to offer. So, whatever you apply here may not go on the junction. This depletion layer has a very small number or negligible we take it zero, no charge carriers, but uh, in any case that uh, is uh, that offers a, a very large resistance. The other regions outside depletion uh, region where you have a uh, lot many charge carriers that offers less resistance and in ideal case no resistance in fact. So, all those things are there. So, this is about uh, forward biasing. Okay, there is one more thing that I should tell that if you have forward biasing, then uh, what happens to the width of the depletion layer? We have derived uh, that uh, equation that width was some square root of uh, uh, the 2 epsilon and this up this uh, volt appearing here and then divided by E 1 over N A 1 over N D something of this sort, something of this sort we had derived that. So, when you apply this forward bias this V decreases. Remember what is this V? This was that uh, potential barrier. So, now this V will become, this V becomes V minus V A. The barrier height is decreased. If this is how the bands are, then uh, this is the barrier height, this is the barrier height. This is P side, this is N side and this is E C and this is E V and when you apply this forward bias, this uh, E C reduces to some lower value like that, like that and hence the barrier is decreased. So, this was V and this is that uh, applied E times or yeah this is energy, so better to write E times E times V A and now this is the barrier. So, in place of V, it becomes V minus V A. So, it is this. So, that means the width of the depletion layer decreases. In forward biasing, the width of the depletion layer decreases and uh, that has some effect on uh, the current also because all that uh, thermal generation of uh, electron hole pairs is in the depletion layer its other places also, but that is an equilibrium situation. Here because of the electric field you have uh, uh, the drift and all those things, so some effect will be there. Now, the next thing is reverse bias, what happens if I connect this circuit, but the polarity is opposite. So, that higher potential is put here and lower potential is put here, then what happens? You can 
you, you can very easily guess what will happen. So let me first remove some of this. If you connect it with opposite polarity, so that this side is at a higher potential, this side is at a lower potential with respect to this side, what you are doing? You are reducing the potential of this side. If I take this as a reference, then by connecting this negative here, you are reducing the potential of this side and therefore, you are increasing the potential energy or increasing the energy of all those quantum states which are there on this p side. So, if you had this uh, picture once again, so in forward bias, this uh, these quantum states, these energies are reduced, but in uh, reverse bias, in this reverse bias, all these energies will go up. So, now your E c will be like this. I am writing with reference to this uh, n side. So, that is why I am only changing this part like this. So, it has shifted up. Okay. So, when uh, in originally, originally you had these, uh, these quantum states and you understand only few at this uh, large energies there are only few electrons left all right because of the fermi distribution function and uh, density of states uh, if you are far away from the fermi energy this uh, this number is very very small and only that part was able to diffuse, only small part was able to diffuse and if you reverse bias, if you increase the barrier, then this diffusion will be further uh, stopped because now, now this will not go. Uh, originally when your E c was here, this could have gone, but now that E c is here, this will not go. So, the diffusion will decrease and drastically because uh, as you go up, the, the population here the, the availability of electrons here falls drastically. So, diffusion current will increase, diffusion current will decrease uh, uh, drastically in this uh, reverse bias. Un already, already when there was no bias, V A was 0, then uh, I diffusion equal to I drift and that is of the order of few micro amperes. Okay, so, already that uh, diffusion current was small and then uh, you increase the barrier and it goes exponentially further down. So, very quickly this diffusion current will decrease. Nevertheless, the similar uh, the story here, uh, the majority car carriers, the majority carriers here are uh, holes, these holes like that as you go away from uh, this point, you have a uh, smaller and smaller population so, and you have lifted everything up and anything, anything above this line is not allowed to go here, your valence band states are here. So, anything above this is not allowed to go here and then you are lifting it up. So, that diffusion of holes also uh, decreases naturally minority carriers. Now, look at the minority carriers, what happens? Where are the minority carriers? In N side, the minority carriers are holes. So, these are the minority carriers. And similarly, here in P side, the minority carriers are electrons. So, here are those electrons. And you can see that minority carriers can easily go. Even in reverse bias, even if this E c has gone up here, no problem for these electrons, they can always go to this n side. And similarly, for these holes, even if this E v has gone up, no problem for these holes, they will just go. Hence, in reverse bias, the drift is not affected by 
this uh, increase in barrier. So you will have the drift current essentially same. Why essentially? Once again, look at this equation. For uh, reverse bias, this will become V plus VA. Okay, you have increased that uh, barrier, and therefore this width will be slightly increased, and therefore in more uh, region, in a bigger region, slightly bigger region, you have those thermal generation of EH pairs. And uh, if more EH pairs are generated in depletion layer, then the drift current will be slightly more. But that is uh, insignificant and for all practical purposes, you can take that in reverse bias. This I drift is almost the same almost the same, almost does not change. But the diffusion current goes down, already it was this, but it goes down and therefore this net current which is now I drift and minus I diffusion and this will be in opposite direction in the direction of that drift. So, your uh, current is in uh, current is in this direction. So, that is the expected direction from the cell also n to p. This is your direction of I drift. So, in this direction and the magnitude will be smaller than I drift to start with and then uh, once I diffusion becomes totally negligible, you have applied some voltage barrier has gone up and then I diffusion has become almost 0. So, it will stabilize at this I drift which is I 0. So, on that uh, diagram I V diagram on the reverse bias start with 0 and then it uh, gradually increases to this I naught and this is known as reverse saturation current. Okay. So, it starts from 0, but very quickly it will attain that uh, I naught and then it will remain I naught for uh, large values of V, no matter how much you increase this barrier. There are some phenomena I will tell, you cannot increase this barrier to very high values before uh, disturbing this, but uh, for reasonable values of uh, V, which could be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 volts, this side you cannot go even to 1 volt, but this side you can go to uh, easily few volts, it remains at this I naught. Okay, but uh, the scales for this side and this side are very different. If you want to show it on the same plot, because this reverse saturation current, this current here, this current here, this I naught here is of the order of few micro amperes. Whereas, uh, in uh, forward bias, the currents could be easily in uh, milli amperes, few tens of milli amperes. All right. So, this is few tens of milli amperes, 10 milli ampere, 20 milli ampere, 30 milli ampere like that. So, on the same scale if you show this line will be very easily hidden in the width of the axis, whatever axis you draw with your pen, pencil or chalk. Okay? So, generally what people do, they use different scales here. This scale is in micro amperes and this scale is in milli amperes. So, you have to read it carefully. So, this is how this uh, IV characteristic takes place. Okay. So, before uh, talking to what happens if I apply very high reverse bias, I told you that there will be some problems if I apply very high reverse bias, but before going into that, let me show you uh, this uh, forward bias and reverse bias on a PN junction and see how the currents vary qualitatively on the table. So, if you go to market and uh, ask for a PN junction diode, this is what you are going to get. Okay? This is one variety 
commonly you get this type of P n junction and you can see it is a black black covering your all semiconductor is inside that and at this right end here this end you can see a silver band here. I hope you are able to see that silver band. This band here. And that is to tell that this is the n type side of this p n junction. So, this will be your p side where you do not have that silver band and the other side where you have the silver band that will be the n side. So, that is how I know about it. Now, to give a voltage on this, I will be using this battery and this battery is a 9 volt battery. So, this 9 volt I will be connecting to this heater coil. So, this is a heater coil and I will be connecting this to this heater. All this 9 volt I will give on this uh, heater coil. This is known as potential divider. So, what I am making is a potential divider. So, I connect this end of the, this is the positive end of the battery to one end of this coil and then the other end of the battery, this is the negative end, this will essentially go here. So, I will just put this thing here and I will connect it, I will connect it later, but I will connect it here. So, that this whole 9 volt drops on this and then I connect uh, another, uh, I take another wire and connect this, uh, this is the positive end of this potential uh, divider and I am connecting it here to the diode. So, one side I have already given to the diode and then the other side I am taking it uh, through this galvanometer. This is a galvanometer and I am, I am connecting this galvanometer to the other side of the diode. So, now what is happening and this, uh, this, this end of the galvanometer I will be touching here. So, if I connect this uh, battery negative to this point, this is 9 volt here and then if I touch it here, what is the circuit on the diode? This is now my potential source. I can make it 0.1 volt or 0.2 volt just by sliding. So, suppose uh, this is that uh, potential source here and then from the positive side, I am connecting it to the p side of this diode, this is the p side without silver band. So, from the positive of this potential, I am connecting it to the p side and then the n side is going to the galvanometer and then back from the galvanometer back to this lower potential side. So, this is a forward bias situation okay? and the potential that I am giving to this diode, of course, the resistances etcetera are there, you know, will be just this much, whatever potential is on this. So, let us start the experiment. So, first I connect this uh, cell here. So, now there is a potential drop of 9 volt or whatever is the battery voltage here and then I can use this much of potential difference to see what happens to this. that. You focus on the galvanometer. See there is a current. Okay. See there is a current. As I increase this, you have a current. So, this is that forward biasing and if I do the reverse biasing, let me invert the polarity of this uh, uh, main battery. So, I put the positive side here and the negative side here. Now, what is happening? This negative side, this is the lower potential and this will be the higher potential. So, the lower potential is connected to P side of this uh, 
p n junction and the higher potential side is connected to the n side. So, it is in reverse bias and now I again give potential to this and you look at this galvanometer. You do not see any current, I am increasing the voltage, see I am increasing the voltage, I am increasing the voltage, I am increasing the voltage and there is no current anywhere. Micro amperes, so you cannot see in this instrument, uh, there is a reverse uh, this uh, current, but that is in micro amperes that you cannot see from here. So, whatever voltage you apply, you do not have a current in the reverse bias. Whereas, in forward bias you saw that if you apply some sufficient voltage, then you have this uh, current. So, the diode offers low resistance in forward bias and diode offers very high resistance in reverse bias. So, now let me talk of what happens if I have very large reverse bias voltage. Large reverse bias voltage also means wide depletion layer, this equation. Okay? If you apply a large reverse bias voltage, you are increasing the barrier and therefore, you are widening the depletion layer. So, the electrons or the holes which are uh, drifting because of the electric field a whole electron pair is generated in this depletion layer and that electron is this is the drift uh, this, this is the okay this is the direction of electric field and therefore the electrons will go in this direction and holes will go in opposite direction so if this electron is going in this electric field it is gaining energy okay the electron is going in this electric field, it is accelerating, it is gaining kinetic energy and therefore, and the depletion region is wide, therefore, it has sufficient time also. So, it can gain so much of energy in this depletion region because of the effect of this electric field that it can, it can knock off an electron from the bond and this electron can produce a new electron hole pair. Okay? So, the electron which is drifting in this direction, they can create these electrons can create these charge carriers can create new hole electron pairs and uh, when, then when this electron is accelerated, it can produce yet another hole electron pair here and this can produce another electron hole pair here and of course, the electrons are all accelerated towards uh, right in this figure and holes are all accelerated towards left in this figure. So, if that happens, it is called avalanche. If that happens, if you apply so much of electric field and the depletion region becomes so much wide that uh, the electrons can create new hole electron pairs and those can also create new electron hole pairs etcetera, then you will have a large current in this uh, reverse bias condition also. Okay? You will have electrons are going this direction, so the current is going in this direction. You will have a large eye drift, this is known as breakdown. This is one mechanism, there are other mechanisms also, but the fact is that if you have uh, reached that breakdown, then it can suddenly, the current can suddenly increase many, many fold. So, this will be the complete IV characteristic. This is one branch or one part forward bias, this is reverse bias and this is breakdown and this whole thing makes this IV characteristics and uh, when you use this as a circuit element, then uh, you have to understand all these things. Okay? So, that is for today.